You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is a pen by Otto Hoot. This was loaned to me by Kenro Industries, who distributes Otto Hoot in the U.S. And uh, so thank you very much, Carrie, for letting me borrow this pen for review. Now, of course, you all know this does not uh, alter my review in any way that I'm aware of. I'll tell you the good and the bad and all that about this pen and how I used it over the last, like, I don't know, a month or so. So this is the Otto Hoot Design 04. And you can see this company was from is a German company. It's been around since 1920. And yet, somehow, this is the first time I've actually used an Otto Hoot pen. Uh, excellent writing instruments. There's the OH logo, which I really like. That is simple, gets the point across. Kind of perfect. And uh, here's what it says on the end cap here, which is Otto Hoot D04028-164934. FHFPF Schwarzglanz Rose. Rose, maybe? Black Shiny Rose. So that tells you everything you need to know, and we can just uh, call it here. So thanks. I'll see you later. Uh, peace out. I'm just kidding. We'll, we get, we'll look at the pen. <laughs> so here it goes. Come on off. There we go. And you can see the interior of this box is pretty simple. Cardboard, interior, and such. In watching videos about Autohoot's practice and their uh, their factory and all this sort of thing, they are big on sustainability and recyclability and all that sort of thing. And so you have this instead of like fake fur or whatever inside the box, which I, uh, I appreciate. I like sustainable business practices where they're possible. You have here a little booklet about Otto Hoot and their various models with teardown pictures and everything, which I think is quite helpful. It has pictures of refills that they take and how they come apart. I think that's pretty nice. So good job, Otto Hoot. Again, another a card here with uh, information you can put the, uh, the serial number for your pen, which is engraved here on the back of the pen right there. Right there. You can put that on here for your records in case you lose it or some such. And a microfiber cloth, which you will need for this pen. I've just been using my own because I didn't want to open this up. This wasn't, I would never be able to fold it up and like get it back in here and looking nice for the next person. So, uh, <laughs> since I'm not keeping this pen, I left it in there. I'll put these back under the little tab there. You have a couple of cartridges. Well, a cartridge and a spacer. This also came with a converter, which is in the pen right now because I like converters. But that would go in here as well. Uh, or maybe a cross. I forget how it was, but this is a very, uh, very useful and interesting box here. Uh, I like, I like what they got going on here. Oh, there's another extra little tag in here that matches the outside. Fun. All right. Guess let's see if we can keep them all together. Chunk. All right. Let's look at this pen. I'll tell you right off, I really like the looks of this pen. I think it is a very nicely styled pen. It has good features going on here. I like the finial here, which is, uh, as far as I can tell, all of a piece with the rest of the cap. Although maybe it unscrews. I haven't been able to take it off. It doesn't seem like it's obviously disassemblable. I think it's just engraved. You have a little ring around here, actually. Uh, then you have the OH for Auto Hoot there, which is, I think, a nice little stylish point. I told you I like their logo. They have the name of the brand right there, Auto Hoot, just behind the top of the clip. Germany, and what I assume is the uh, the serial number of this particular pen engraved there. Another couple of engraved bands going around where, the, uh, where you would have sort of a a clip band if this weren't a machine a sort of mechanical clip i really like this clip design it is excellent it's good quality one piece clip none of this like folded metal stuff has a nice spring in there you can absolutely use this clip and you can already see why i said you need that microfiber cloth look at what a fingerprint magnet this is it is so uh so highly polished that i'm constantly wiping fingerprints off of it and so i just get out my little my little microfiber and I just get a little bit of a a little bit of a wipe down. Now this is rose gold plated with real rose gold. It's not just that color, which is very nice. Uh, and I think that the hardware really looks good on here. Rose gold is not my go-to for fountain pens, but rose gold and black is a classic combo. And I really like it here. I like the proportions of the body to the uh, to the cap, to the butt cap, to the other other finial? I'm not really sure. Other finial I'm going to go with, which is a little skinnier, which does allow you to post it on the back there. Now, they say this black bit is lacquered. The whole pen is brass, and then it's either plated with precious metals or lacquered in some way. I wasn't able to find anywhere what sort of lacquer this was, uh, but at this price point, I don't think it's going to be a Rushi. It just seems like it's a little bit low for that. So some other sort of lacquer, but it does have a very nice luster to it. Good shine. Nice, uh, 
almost depth to it. It's very interesting. Also, the lacquer itself is so highly polished. It is also a bit of a fingerprint magnet, although not nearly as bad as the as the cap, which is very fingerprinty. Okay, let's get inside here. Takes several turns to unscrew the cap. That's going to go on my cons list here at the end of the video. But uh, I have, uh, when I use it, you know, for long periods, I just put the cap back on and just set it on the desk. You know, I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to screw it all the way down. Inside the cap, you'll see it is uh, line has a plastic liner in there, and um, I can't see the. Where are you going? Stay there. I can't see any screws or anything up in here, so this liner goes all the way to the bottom, which is nice. I haven't had this dry out at all, but it also means that, like, you know, removing that clip, I don't really think that's a thing you're gonna be gonna be accomplishing. I think this cap stays as it is. Now here you have the interior of the pen, the section, and the nib. The section is uh, <laughs> the biggest fingerprint magnet because your fingers are constantly on it, right? Uh, it does have a nice flare down here, and it hasn't felt slippery at all in my hands. I'm not um, I'm not opposed to a metal section, but I know some people think they're uh, too slippery. This one has, feel, has felt just fine. I haven't had any problems with it feeling slippery. The threads are up here, and they are sort of squared off. As you can see, so they aren't rough against your fingers if you happen to hold it higher for some reason, and it's just your hold. It hasn't bothered me at all. The nib on this pen, I think, is especially good looking. This is a steel nib. I believe you can also get them in gold, but I haven't seen a gold one. So here it is with the uh, the Auto Hood logo in there, which, is that the Auto Hood logo? I'm not actually sure what that is. It looks like a little person with an eye, maybe? Kind of looks like the PBS logo, actually, a little bit. It's so tiny that uh, it's hard to tell, actually. A little tiny F underneath that, denoting the fine nib. And then you can see the two-tone plating on here, rose gold plating on the nib as well, with all these, uh, these very nice linear designs on the nib. I think it's a very attractive nib, and of course it matches the hardware, which looks extra good. So, there you have it. Let me unscrew this. Several turns to unscrew the body, no problem there. Autohoot branded converter, which is a uh, standard international converter. Schmidt style, you can see all the way down in there. This does have metal and such, so I wouldn't, <laughs> I mean, it's an all brass pin. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eyedropper this, Just don't do that. So let's put that back in there, Autohoot. Screw it back down. And you can see this does post nicely on the end there, should you want to. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that unless you happen to hold really far back. Uh, if, you're, if you hold it entirely on the bottle of the body and not on the section, then you could do this. Uh, but this cap is pretty weighty back here, and so I wouldn't really recommend uh, posting it. Uh, maybe you like posting it, but it becomes very long and quite back heavy when you do. All right, so there you have it. That's the Auto Hut Design 04. Let's take a look at this next to some other pens, do a little writing sample, and uh, I'll close with a little bit of a pros and cons. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back with some paper. Let's get to doing a little bit of a writing sample. Now, this is a fine nib, and it is, I think, ever so slightly dry. Uh, this isn't the wettest ink ever. This is the Auto Hut. I'm waving it around for too long. There we go. Design 04. Fine nib, and this is inked with Sailor Tokiwamatsu, which is a very nice piney green that develops a bit of a sheen there. Uh, so not the wettest ink on the planet. This uh, nib does seem to uh, to keep up with it just fine, delivers it well to the page. I haven't had any problems with this nib at all. It hasn't dried out. It hasn't given me hard starts, aside from that right there, but I will forgive it that. I've been waving it around uh, through a couple of takes of this video with no, <laughs> no cap on. So uh, that's not surprising at all. It happens to me on camera all the time. But as you can see, uh, good flow, although maybe a little touch on the dry side, hard to say, but medium, maybe slightly medium dry. Totally fine for a lot of the inks that are out there, and um, I don't mind it at all. I've been using it, especially in this fine nib, I've been using it for doing things like writing in my journal, writing in my to-do lists, things that require me to write fairly small, and this pen lets me do it. Uh, in my hand, I think this is a perfectly, uh, uh, a perfectly good length of a pen. It's not very long. If it were much shorter, I would say it was a bit too short to use unposted for my hand, but again, my hands are pretty big, and maybe yours aren't. 
I think the section is a little bit on the skinny side. The section goes from uh, 8.1 millimeters to 9.6 millimeters. I usually like to be in the like 10 or 11 millimeter range for a section. And so this is a little bit on the skinny side, but it hasn't stopped me from writing with it for uh, quite a while. So uh, I've been enjoying this pen for, uh, for a bit now. Feels good in the hand. Feels nice on the page. All right. So let's compare it to some other pens. Okay, so here we have it against several other pens of various sizes and that sort of thing. Of course, we have the Twisby Eco over here, just as a size comparison. We have the Otohut Design 04. We have the Platinum 3776. This is the Nice Pure version. This is a Pilot 823. And then we have the Sailor Pro Gear. This is the full-size Pro Gear right here. And you can see that it is of a size with the Pro Gear and maybe just a little bit shorter here than the Platinum when they're capped. Let's take off some caps and look at writing lengths on these. All right, so there you go. Uh, now, this is uh, sort of, I don't know, it's kind of in the middle between these ranges. The 823, I think, is kind of the perfect size for me uh, in terms of length and also girth of the section and all that jazz. But you can see the uh, the the Auto Hut Design 04 kind of comes in just a little bit shorter. Totally fine. A little bit skinnier at the grip even than the, uh, the Twisby Eco here. And a little bit longer than the 3776, which... Uh, is uh, just like like this is this is also a really good uh, diameter, but it could be a little bit longer. Like it's starting to get down in there in the web of my hand. Uh, I do love writing with three seven seven sixes though, so not a problem. And it is longer than the Pro Gear, which is just a little bit on the short side for me uh, writing without it being posted. This is just a better pen posted for me. So the Design 04 has a good design. It looks nice. I think it fits in with a lot of uh, its peers here, uh, and it's uh, it's got an elegance to it that I really enjoy. All right, so let me cap these up, and we'll talk a little bit of pros and cons real quick before we get out of here. Okay, so quick pros and cons, and then uh, I'll end it with a bunch of stats and stuff here at the very end. So pros, the style of this thing is great. It is a beautiful pen. Every time I showed this on a live stream or showed it to another human person, they're like, wow, that's a, that's a good looking pen. And I think it's true. It's got a good weight to it. I really like the uh, the weight on this pen. It comes in uh, uncapped at about 25 grams, so just under an ounce. And I think it's I think it's very nice. So I like the weight of it. I also really like the clip. I've re reviewed a couple of pens lately that I like a lot, and then I said, well, the clip isn't that great. I think the clip on this is superior. It is a great clip. I also think that the nib on this is beautiful. Just. Great looking nib. It also writes very nicely, uh, especially if you're trying to write small, maybe on some dodgy papers that you're not sure about whether it can take the ink or not. A uh, nib that is slightly on the dry side and on the fine side is great for those papers. And this one is uh, nice and smooth, if a bit fine. All right, so cons. I think this pen is just a little bit too slim for me and uh, and, and these hands. Uh, I would like to be, see a little bit thicker pen uh, in terms of the, the section and all that. I, if it was a little bit thicker, that would be a little bit better for me. I think the biggest problem with this pen is that uh, it takes too many cap, it takes too many turns to uncap. It's a good three, three and a half turns of this pen. Yeah, three, three and a half turns. And that's, that's too many threads to be casually uh, just using a pen. Like, I want to take some notes. I got so many spins. Uh, but this is a good pen to use in something like a pen well or to uh, just uncap once and then just leave sitting in the cap on, uh, on the desk and until you're ready to use it. And you just stick it back in there. That works just fine. Uh, I also think this is a total fingerprint magnet, which I know is going to annoy some people. I mean, look at all the, I wiped this clean before I started this video, and this is just from handling it during this video. It is nigh impossible to keep uh, unfingerprinted, which is going to be annoying to some people, but those people just probably shouldn't get super glossy metal pens, I would guess. And the other thing is that it's a little bit on the pricey side. The uh, manufacturer suggested retail price of this pen is $295, and that gives it a street or store price of about $236 in most of the places I've looked. Now, there are uh, less expensive designs 
or I should say styles of this design. Uh, you can get them in just, I think, plain stainless and a few other things, which do, does bring the, the price down. The rose gold has brought the price up, and that's to be expected because it is rose gold plated. But uh, at 230 something or 300 bucks, that puts it in contention with some other very strong pens. And so I think the price point might be a little bit of a problem for this pen, but it's just... It's so darn good looking and pleasing to use that I think a lot of people are going to be like, hey, you know what? Good enough. It's good enough. But I think the price point is a little bit on the high side. So there you go. Those are my thoughts about the Auto Hoot Design 04. I dig this pen, but it's a little bit on the small side for me. So pick this up at your favorite De Auto Hoot Design 04 retailer. I found it online at a whole bunch of stores. And now that it's being repped by Kenro, it's going to be all over the place, which is, I think, really good for this, uh, this pen and for uh, people who are looking for something new and extremely stylish to use. So I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.